So what we're going to try to do tonight, uh, as quickly and efficiently as possible, so you guys get a handle on this, is talk about networking on your boat. Why you should network your gear, you know, why you want to go through this trouble. Uh, a little brief background of NEMA and how it works. Um, and uh, where it comes from, what it, you know, what is NEMA? A basic network implementation. So we're going to talk about how the manufacturers implement things and the differences. We're going to talk about setting up your network, which is where we're going to get into the parts and pieces, and gateways and bridges to other networks, the types of sensors that are out there, the network devices, and multifunction displays and chart plotters. And then we're going to get into some of the stuff you guys already asked, Config physically configuring the network, how to design, how to install, how to power it, uh, and get that backbone running properly. And then once we have that squared away, we're going to move on to connecting all the NEMA 2000 devices, uh, how different manufacturers handle their networks. And then finally, we're going to start adding things like Wi-Fi, smart devices, laptops, uh, via various types of gateways and bridges. And then in the end, I'm just going to hit on a few little oddball things that's already come up because um, trying to get a couple of things, some of the older networks working, like the original CTALK-1, the old NEMA 183, and even Raymarine NG has a couple little issues on how to get those to interconnect. And then we're going to do a Q&A session where we can just open it up and you guys can ask all the questions you want, and I'll try to answer them. So why do you want to network? I mean, what's the, why do I want to spend energy doing all this and make this all work? The number one thing is, collecting all this data that you've got on your boat, all in various locations on various sensors and various displays and putting it all together so you can manage your environment and give yourself situational awareness. I'm all about situational awareness. I did it in Navy, I do it on big ships, and where I can bring all this data to one place and then have it share information between my subsystems, I can give myself a much better view of the world and a much better understanding of what's going on around me and on my boat. So that's the, the primary reason I want to network and I think that people should. Situational awareness, managing your boat for safety, general boat management, just so you know what's going on in your boat, obviously navigational assistance and making life just a little simpler to operate. So NEMA 2000, um, NEMA 2000 is kind of neat. It lets you do a lot of kind of cool things anywhere from, you know, getting your, your wind indicator or your GPS onto your chart plotter or your MDF to powering lights. Uh, you can have relays and switches. You can do all sorts of things with NEMA 2000. We're going to focus today on basic boat, getting your boat going. And this is my boat, Rhapsody on Blue. This is my network design. If you, on my boat, I have twin helms. So I have an MFD in the cockpit in the center between the two that I can kind of swing back and forth. Uh, and then I have a couple of iPads, one on each, each helm that lets me kind of always have my data in front of me whenever I'm, I'm sailing the boat. I'm kind of a techie, so I find it part of the fun of you know having all this information at my fingertips. But I want all that data to go to those three uh, MFD or the, you know those three devices and I also have two MFDs in my nav station and the reason I choose MFDs personally is because I don't want them necessarily to be a chart plotter. Sometimes I want them to show my log data. I want to look at engine information. I want to look at weather data. I want to have my radar on one screen and wind indicator on another screen so I can make those MFDs, those multi-function displays, do anything I want if they're all in the network. Uh, and so my base levels that I want network the things like GPS, speed, ship's heading, my environmental data, wind, depth, barometer, weather data like XM weather. I have a laptop. I can pull down grim files and then I can put that on my laptop and lay my information on that on the laptop. And of course, AIS and radar for traffic data. So I have all that integrated on my boat using a NEMA 2000 primary network, and then I have a gateway to a NEMA 183 network, sort of legacy Raymarine gear that came with the boat, because it works, why rip it out? The auto, I love the autopilot, it's strong and solid, so I keep that separate. And I also want radar 
to all my MFDs so I can pull it up. So there's another little side network that we'll talk about later. I have my wind indicators up on my mast, so they come down the mast, and we're gonna talk about lengths of NEMA 2000 and how to get NEMA 2000 up your mast or how to get data down to the NEMA, NEMA 2000 backbone. So that's my boat. That's just an example of kind of nuts, nutsy networking because I just like doing it and I practice and I, I play with that. NEMA is a National Maritime Electronics Association. It's an international open standard. NEMA 2000 isn't a piece of cable. Uh, it's not equipment. It is a how-to guide that was created by a, uh, the National Maritime Electronics Association personnel for mission critical data. And it has a lot of neat capabilities. One of the things it has, especially for larger ships and larger networks, it has multiple priorities. So cr mission critical data has a higher priority. You, have, you can have different levels of information running at different priorities. And basically NEMA 2000, 2000. is based on an ethernet called CAN, and we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Um, but <coughs> ethernet runs with something called carrier sense multiple access collision detect. And why you wanna know that it's just like we're having a meeting here today. Right now, I'm the only one talking and everyone is listening. That's the old NEMA 183 system. The NEMA 2000 system is we can all talk at once, we can all share information, except that if we all try to talk at once, we kind of all stop and we back up and we wait. And then someone else starts to talk and then we listen or maybe two people start and then we back off again. The carrier sense multiple access collision detect is that exact system that's running on NEMA 2000. All the devices listen on the network to see if there's a silence moment, then they send their data. If more than one sends it simultaneously, you have a collision and it detects that collision, it backs off and every piece of equipment is designed based on its ID to have a different wait period. So that's essentially how the network moves data, at least at the level of an operator that you need to know. NEMA 2000, the network itself, has a number of layers. There's a physical layer, which is what you hold in your hand. It's the pieces, parts, the cables, the connectors, the terminator, the power supply, all the stuff that you would actually hold in your hand and run through the boat and connect to things. Then there's a data link layer that's defined by the International Standards Organization that manages the physical layer. There's rules, like electrical rules, what type of wiring has to be done, how uh, the systems get power, that's all in the data link later. The network layer is how the network operates. That's the carrier sense multiple access collision detect. That's CSMACD system, which is classic ethernet. Uh, network management is something you don't have to really worry about. It's another ISO standard, and it's really used by the manufacturers to manage their equipment. So we don't really have to worry about that so much. And then finally, the application layer is where we define the final standard and we let systems talk to each other and share information. So if you have a smartphone that has an app that can read GPS data, and you are connected to our NEMA 2000 network by, say, Wi-Fi, you can, you can get that GPS data off the GPS receiver. And that's why that application layer is important for you. So a little more background. There's a whole bunch of ways to network stuff. Ethernet, Navnet, CTOK, SmartCraft, USB, Wi-Fi, Garmin Marine Network, CanNet. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different networks mostly managed and operated by Garmin, Raymarine, Simrad, and Furuno. I noticed most everybody there has Raymarine, Garmin, and I think there were a couple of Simrads. Does anybody have any other principal MFDs? I deal a little with uh, B&G. B&G, okay, well B&G does use standard NEMA 2000, so you're good. <laughs> you don't have anything weird going on there. Garmin is NEMA 2000. Raymarine is kind of sort of NEMA 2000. We have Furuno on our ship, our big ship, but they're just a little more involved because they have specialized networks. NEMA 2000, NEMA 183, the original version, is a rule book. It's a set of international standards that these companies and all the, the Marines uh, technology people have put together and they've given you these international standards and we need to adhere to those. Here's the first rule that you need to remember. Nothing more than 50 devices. That's the magic number because of that carrier sense, multiple access collision detect. You don't want to have more than 50 devices on your network. 
Uh, and I don't think anybody here, including myself, has 50 devices on their boat, but keep in mind. Uh, if you need more than 50, then you have to do multiple backbones, and that's yet a whole other fun discussion we can have in the future. Uh, all devices on NEMA 2000 are send and receive. They can all talk. Remember, I mentioned earlier that NEMA 183, it was one talker and multiple listeners. In NEMA 2000, all devices can talk to each other. So that allows a lot more functionality that you normally don't have in NEMA 2000 or NEMA 183. It's also a land-based CAN network. It's a controller area network. Um, that basically came from auto manufacturing. That's what they use. Same system is used to control all the uh, robots on an assembly line. It's where the original network for NEMA 2000 came from. And that's based on Ethernet, but with some slight modifications to Ethernet. So we're running a CAN-based LAN. And what's important there is knowing that it's a LAN. The topology that we're going to get into is a linear topology. It's not serial. It's not connecting one device to another. It's connecting all the devices to one network. So this is essentially where we are with our NEMA 2000. Um, all the other networks that function off NEMA 2000, like CTALK NG is a good example uses the base NEMA 2000 network and then layers on top of that some special capabilities, but they meet the standards for NEMA 2000. Right up in here, you can see my little mouse moving around. That's the LAN for a NEMA 2000. And each one of these taps, T connectors, takes you to different types of devices and the yellow guy in the middle is our power and we'll talk to these a little more in, in detail. But essentially you have a LAN topology and you have all these devices connected. You can also connect a gateway for to get to other types of networks, and you can you can draw power from the LAN network, and we'll talk about power. So we're going to be focusing mostly on NEMA 2000, but I will tell you how to get like a 183 existing network to talk NEMA 2000. We'll talk about the Wi-Fi stuff. It, NEMA 2000 runs 50 times faster than NEMA 183, so it's very quick. Uh, and it is the multi-talker, multi-listener land-based system. So different manufacturers implement NEMA 2000 differently. Uh, Furuno has something called a CAN bus. Uh, it comes off the controller area network um, name. And it's, it's electronically compatible with NEMA 2000, but it's not exactly the same. They use kind of different hardware. Um, and you'll see some examples of that coming up. For a NavNet is really the network you would be using on a small boat if you were using a NEMA 2000 network. Uh, Garmin Marine Network is its brand name for NEMA 2000. It is pure NEMA 2000. There's nothing special. So anything Garmin will work on a NEMA 2000 network. And you don't have to worry about anything special. Raymarine SeaTalk 1, it's very proprietary. It's very old. Uh, and they have upgraded to SeaTalk NG, which is the current Raymarine network, which is NEMA 2000, but they've sort of added above NEMA 2000 in that application layer we talked about. They've added some other functionality so they can do more than NEMA 2000, but their base MFDs and their base chart plotters and most of their gear as well is NEMA 2000 compliant. So it can use, it can use on any standard NEMA network. Uh, SimRad, the SimNet network, is electronically compatible, but they use different hardware, and you'll, I'll show you that in a few minutes so you can see how that works. SmartCraft and Teleflex Magic Bus, they're an example of networks that specific manuers, manufacturers make to ride on a NEMA 2000 network, but don't necessarily uh, meet NEMA specifications. Merc cruisers, so like if you have a boat with a couple of outboard Mercs on it, Merc Mercury engines, you can get all that engine data to your chart plotter. You have to go through their SmartCraft network and then tie it to your MDF to your NEMA 2000. This is an example, this page is an example of just some of the basic sensors that are out there. You know, a lot you guys know, wind indicators, depth finders, GPS, uh, but there's also all sorts of Wi-Fi gateways, routers, uh, there's bridges between NEMA 2000 networks, there's computer connects, and then for the sensors, water tank, fuel tank, gray and black water, digital thermometers, barometers, 
Uh, humidity sensors, complete weather systems are available. You can have voltage and current management and control. You can have your all your batteries tied into this, your battery management tied in, rudder indicated, uh, voyage recorders, alarms, horns. You can hook up your nav lights to it. You can hook up your radio to it. You can use XM radio. You can do all sorts of things with NEMA 2000. It is a very versatile network. So this is sort of the higher end side of things like there's depth finders and fish finders. You can, you know, there's just about everything you could think of. Cameras, FLIRs, like thermal imaging cameras for night, they're all can be tied to a network. You can put a, a camera right on top of your, um, on your, up in your mast and feed it to your chart plotter. And these are just some MFD examples of how to integrate that data, bringing it all up. And one of the things that's important when you're integrating it is not to overload your senses. You, you want to really focus on what do you need so I, I want you to create screens like, okay, I have my nav screen uh, when I'm offshore, I have my inland screen, I have my anchor screen, I have my systems management screen. So I can go back and forth and not just be inundated with tons of data that's not really relevant for what I'm doing. And that's sort of an example here of some of the chart plotter MFDs displays. Network topology. The distance between any two T connectors and a T connector is what you would use to connect to your, your land backbone. Um, can exceed 100 meters or 328 feet. You actually want to keep your devices as close as you can. So when we design a network, we're thinking about, you think about essentially a long cable that runs, say, from the bow of your boat to the stern of your boat. And that's your NEMA 2000 basic land backbone whether it's Raymarine NG or Garmin or whoever, it doesn't really matter at this point at this level of topology design, it's a cable. Most of the manufacturers provide predefined cable lengths, so it makes your life easy. You don't have to wire and put these special connectors on, you can just buy chunks of cable. What I normally recommend is that you kind of look and find out where all your equipment is. Like I have a lot of gear at the nav station. And then up forward, I have a depth finder. Uh, up on my mast, I have wind indicator. Back at the stern, I have my little mushroom, um, uh, you know, garden of all my, my GPS antennas and my XM radio antennas and all that kind of stuff and my, my Vesper AIS antenna. That all sits at the back. So I have a cluster there. And in the helm, I have some displays. So I would have my chart plotter or MFD up in up in by the helm I might I might have some multifunction displays you know sort of the old classic displays for speed wind depth finders that I want on the network as well so I want to kind of lay out where these things are so I would just draw a rough diagram of your boat doesn't have to be fancy and that diagram you want to kind of figure out where you're going to run your cable so that's the first step where does this cable go once you know that, we can start to figure out where we're going to cluster our, our connections. So it, starting at our nav station, we might have, you know, whatever, four or five things to connect. So we can either get very short stretches of the LAN cable, or we can get something called a hub, which is, is the equivalent of four, six, or eight of these T connectors all built into a little box. So it's like four T connectors all together. You can get those, you can get, you know, four or eight unit, so you can put that in your nav station and you can connect all your NEMA 2000 boxes to those T connectors, and then those T connectors get connected together to the LAN. Uh, you want to keep them as close as you can, and you, you, you see you can put a hub in at your network, and then you can run a long cable from that hub, say to your stern, put another T connect, or another hub in with three or four T connectors, and then put a terminator on the end. You always have to terminate a NEMA 2000 network. It's a male and a female terminator. You can put those on either end. Um, so you want to have those connectors. So now you have like maybe a hub at your, in your, hel or your helm, a hub at your nav station. And maybe we run another 20-foot line and have a hub somewhere up forward if you have other equipment. If you don't have a lot of equipment in one place, you can just use a T-connector in short stretches. You can get like 6-inch, 12-inch, 24-inch. 20 feet, 80 feet, 100 foot chunks of this, this cable. You can order whatever length you want. Figure out how many taps these T-connectors you're going to need in any given location. Uh, and again, if there's going to be a lot, put a hub in. 
and then run short se sections of your NEMA 2000 cable out from there. And this works exactly the same with all the manufacturers in their systems. So there's some basic rules. You don't want to go over 1,000 meters or 3,600 feet. Well, I don't think we're worried about that. I think we're all going to be under 80 feet. And there's a magic number of 80 feet. That is the longest you can make a single piece of NEMA 2000 and make it run at full speed. Because the longer the cable, the more voltage drop. And, and normally, you have a lot more equipment on a longer cable, and it starts to run a little bit slower. But just bear in mind, 80 feet is about as long as you want. So what you don't want to do is have like a bunch of 50-foot cables going to T-connectors all the way down the boat, because that all adds up. So try to figure out where your gear is, figure out the main path of your LAN cable, then figure out how many taps you need where you need them, then order the appropriate cable lengths to go between those taps. And if you can cluster a bunch of taps together, you can use a hub. The next thing you need to be worried about is the length of a drop cable. A drop cable is the connection from that LAN to your device. So you have a LAN that goes across, then you have a T connector and a vertical line, let's say up to your MFD or down to your depth finder, up to your wind indicator. The maximum distance you can have on a T connector is about 20 some odd feet on a drop cable. So you gotta keep that in mind. So if you do like have gear at the top of your mast, what I'm gonna recommend to you is design your LAN so that it, when you get to your mast, Go up the mast with your main base LAN network, not with, a, not with a T and going out on a tap cable, on a drop cable, but you have to go out on your primary LAN has to go up your mast. You can see right in here, I have my base LAN and I have all these T connectors and I sort of have a cluster of T connectors. It's hard to see here because this isn't the scale, obviously. This is my, my um, primary nav station. And these guys are out on my stern. This stuff is up on my up forward. When you've got that land, you know where things are going to go. You know you need so many taps. You need a couple of hubs. How many ports you need on those hubs. Where those T connectors of those hubs are going to have the drop cables going to. Then you can connect your devices to that. Now you've got to worry about powering things. Your MFDs and larger systems generally get their power from your boat, right? No problem, you've got batteries. But you'll find that some gear on your NEMA 2000 network draws its power from the NEMA 2000 network, so you must power the network. So you need a, another specialized T connector that's your power. So on your power, you need 12 volt DC, but you can have sort of plus or minus you know, a few, a few volts, you can go from nine to 16 volts. So you can have some fluctuation, you know, as long as you stay within nine to 16 and around 12, you're fine. And your network power tap should always be in the middle of your network. You can connect it anywhere on the network. You can even connect it out on the ends. But bear in mind, and I talk about it on this slide, you can have a voltage drop. You can have 12 volts at one end of your cable and you have so much equipment powering off of it, by the time you get to the other end of the cable, you could maybe be below, be below nine volts and have problems. Or even in nine to 10 volts, you may have issues. So you want your power tap to be in the middle of your network. And when you power your network, you don't wanna just wire it straight to your battery. There's generally three wires. There's black, red, and the ground. So you, you, you want to ground it to your, to your batteries. You want to put a switch in between, because if you don't put a switch in and you've left your boat out at anchor or something, you're going to find that that network is going to slowly drain your battery. So make sure you put a switch so that when you leave your boat, you can turn it off. And again, connect it right to your battery. Put it in the center of your network so that your 12 volt is feeding most of your gear, least distance on your network. Just gonna zip back here again. I just wanna go through this topology with you a little bit. So remember, T connectors, they, have, they can't be further than 300 feet apart. Well, that's pretty straightforward for us because we all have 20, 30, 40 foot boats, maybe a couple of 50 footers. So our T's are probably within six inches or six feet 
of each other, maybe 10, 15 feet. So that's not that big of a deal. 80 feet is your maximum length of your overall primary land. So try to keep it under 80 feet. You can go to over 3,000 3, feet. It's not that it won't work. But you want it to work as the best possible. You want to keep it at 80 feet. You want to keep less than 50 devices on your network. You want your T connector tap your those drop cables to not be more than 20 feet. Try to keep those as small as I can. And your maximum cumulative drop cable. So if every one of your drop cables is 10 feet and you have a, you have 10 of them, that's 100 feet. You can't exceed more than 256 feet with those drop cables. So don't make those drop cables longer than they need to be as well. Make sure they're short, sweet, and concise. I also recommend when you're laying these out, label everything. Those T's, because you might have four or five T's down underneath the seat that goes to things. You're trying to figure out where all these cables that look alike go to. Make sure you label everything while you're building your network. And remember, it's a linear network. You can see the drawings at the bottom. You can't put a tap on a tap. Every tap has to be on the mainland, and you can't tap a tap. So there's a little checklist I put on here for you when you're designing your network. Again, and it really doesn't matter if it's if it's uh, Raymarine or um, or Garmin or Sim Simrad or whatever. These are these are all standard NEMA 2000 requirements. So you can use that when you're when you're building your network just to make sure you didn't miss anything. And then that mast height issue I mentioned to you. If your sailboat mast is way longer than 20 feet, which I think pretty much all of ours are. You cannot use a drop cable to get up to the top of your mast. You have to run your LAN primary backbone up the mast. This is a SeaTalk NG network that we're looking at, so for Raymarine. Again, SeaTalk NG is a NEMA 2000 network. Again, Raymarine has played around with it a little bit. If you look at the drawing, they're using hubs. They're essentially NEMA 2000, but they're using, they can, they can use a different diameter cable. So if you're doing a principal Raymarine NG network, you'll be buying different cable than if you were using a Garmin network, but they can interface. At some point, you can get an adapter cable or a, or a small adapter that goes, goes to both, so they will interface very cleanly with an adapter. Um, so these hubs let you connect to various devices. And again, CTALK-1 is sort of NEMA 183, almost pre-183. Uh, CTALK-NG is the current system. And that's NEMA 2000, and all Raymarine MFDs are NEMA 2000 certified. So you can use a Raymarine on a Garmin network and a Garmin MFD on a Raymarine. This is a Garmin network, a basic one again. So you can see here, it's a little clearer. The blue line down the middle going across left to right is your primary backbone. Your various T connectors, and yellow is your power. And normally you have an uninsulated drain wire, which is your ground, and red and black for your hot, your positive and negative on your battery. But again, you don't see a switch in here. Always put a switch in your power cable so you can turn off the network. I have mine connected directly to my auxiliary on my on my um, in my nav station. So when I turn that on, it turns on the network and all my equipment. So I just keep it all tied together. And you can see on this Garmin drawing that the Garmin radar. The red line connects to the chart plotter directly. That's true for most of these systems. So if you really have, you have a radar you want to get to a chart plotter that's, or MFD that's located in your nav station, and one located up um, in your nav station, one located up on your helm, you're going to want to get whatever the manufacturer has for a radar network interface. Uh, the Garmin is bulky as heck. It's this big box. It looks like a bunch of Ethernet cables, standard Ethernet like you'd have on your computer at home. And you connect your radar to that, and then you connect that to all your chart plotters offline from the NEMA 2000 network. This is Simrad for you guys. Again, it uses a hub system. You can see the hubs. And it uses also, some of its gear can be serially connected. On the right-hand side of that drawing, you'll see three devices that are serially connected. And they use a very specialized network. It's still NEMA 2000, but it is configured physically differently. Furuno is really built for larger ships. It's really not designed for small boat use. Furuno Navnet does work pretty well, but the other networks you have to deal with to get a large ship to talk is quite dreadful, but I put it in here just so you can see it. And then we have Wi-Fi gateways. So if you want to connect your iPad, your iPhone, 
or your laptop with a Wi-Fi, you can buy a Wi-Fi gateway. It just plugs right in on one of your taps and it sends out a Wi-Fi uh, signal that you can pick up and then you can connect in and you can use that on any smartphone or iPhone or tablet can download an app that talks NEMA 2000 and shares data. There's an example there. And it works the same way with Ethernet. You can get a USB to NEMA 2000 and you just plug it right into the NEMA 2000. There's a USB on the other end, plug it into your laptop. Um, I have a number of different software packages on mine. This is Mac ENC, but it gives me all my heading, GPS, depth, all my data on my laptop screen along with my position and I can do plotting on my laptop. The only issue here is, depending on your laptop, you may find that you need to do some software changes to the, to the application that comes with your chosen uh, Ethernet to NEMA 2000 network cable. Um, I'm going to hold off on these uh, for a little bit and take some, hit some of these questions you've been asking before we get into some of the oddball networking. Um, so at this point, I'll open it up to questions. I'm just going to take a look at the chat and make sure I hit everybody. So Beverly asked me about a Garmin chart plotter. I have a wheelhouse mounted autopilot. Yeah. So Sharon, you asked me about distance one way or round trip. So say the backbone is 30 feet, 20 feet. Yeah. Sure. But that's really 40 feet. No, it's 30 feet. It's it it's just linear, it's linear length. So so in this is that the same thing with the spurs? So yes. if a spur is two feet, it's not four feet, it's two feet. That's correct. The drop cable, the spur you call it, it's a drop cable, and, it, and yes, it's, one, it's just the length of the cable. And the only thing, again, you're worried about the drop cable, you want to keep it less than 20 feet. I recommend you want to keep it less than two or three feet. But, you know, if you have your, your land running underneath your um, cabin sole, you put a T down there, you got to go five, ten feet to get to maybe some gear on the wall. So it's not the end of the world, but keep it as short and sweet as you can. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we need to worry about interference from EMF? Well, that's a good question, Chris. <laughs> so you no, know, you, you really don't. What you do need to worry a little bit about, though, is um, there's no real EMF issues here. There's nothing to worry about there. But if you do use Wi-Fi off of your NEMA 2000, you're going to want to make sure that Wi-Fi, depending on what you want to do with it, is where you need it to be. I have a pair of Garmin chart plotter MFDs in my nav station. With, they have built-in Wi-Fi. So I can just use that Wi-Fi, but they're flush mounted. And so my Wi-Fi link is about six feet. That's about all I can get for the signal. And I'm going to get a Wi-Fi adapter and put it in my NEMA 2000 network. And then I'll run that to a T cable and put it right underneath the table in the center of the cockpit. So it's actually mounted under the table so it's safe from water. And the, cable, the, you know, the drop cable will run down in, but now I have a good strong Wi-Fi. Hillary, wind speed of autobahn, she talked as a manor length. Oh, your C, uh, this is for Hillary. The C talk length is very similar to the NEMA 2000, but since it is C talk and it is Raymarine, there are some slight variances, but if you stay well within these specs, you'll be fine with both. And Chris, you asked it wired to your, oh yeah, again, I don't recommend wiring it directly to your battery. I recommend wiring it to a switch. And if you're going to not put it on a fused network or a breaker network, I would put an inline fuse in as well, just for safety's sake, because you don't want that draining your battery, because um, that network will drain your battery down over time. We're talking about powering smaller devices like your gateway uh, to your USB or your barometer or some of the other small devices re that require that NEMA 2000 power. And all the larger devices are self-powered. So um, let me just take a minute here. So yeah, so we have a 183, an existing old network that we want to get to NEMA 2000. First off, there's a couple of examples down at the bottom of this page. Uh, they do require some configuration for software, but the, the beauty is you can connect that to your NEMA 2000 network and it's bi-directional data. So you can share information from say a Garmin chart plot around your NEMA 2000 to an old 183 autopilot. You have to be a little careful. You have to make sure you kind of done, done your homework because there are different types of NEMA 183s and I listed those here, differential, differential. It's basically single-ended and differential NEMA 183. Um, and you're going to have to find out what your NEMA 183 network is. 
uh, and then get the right adapter, but they will connect to NEMA 2000 directly. If you're doing CTALK to NEMA 2000, it's a little straight, a little more straightforward. CTALK 1, first of all, you cannot connect CTALK 1 to NEMA 2000. What I recommend is converting your CTALK 1 to CTALK NG using the, the hardware that Raymarine sells. They sell a kit to do that from CTALK 1 to CTALK NG. And then you can just use a standard adapter cable that either I, any of your manufacturers sell, including Raymarine, to go from CTALK NG to CTALK, or to NEMA 2000. It's really not hard. Use my PDF to get you started. And, and again, I'm around. And if you need some you know, quick question, I'm happy to answer it. Uh, pop me a PM or give me a call or send me an email. Or if you want some real you know, serious coaching, I can set up a, you know, a coaching time for you and we can work it out. I'll work out your design or all, any of your troubleshooting issues. You guys have a great night. Have fun. And I hope I gave you a little insight to NEMA 2000 tonight.